Crystal has made its triumphant return, and so too has the Luxury Line's pair of existing ships, Crystal Symphony and Serenity, the latter of which we're here to take a look at today prior to the brand's upcoming new builds. Welcome to Popular Cruising. I am your host Jason Leppert, and this is our deck-by-deck -deck tour and a review of Crystal Serenity. Beginning low on Deck 5 and working our way on up is first the included Crystal Plaza Atrium and Reception, Concierge, Shore Excursions, and Future Sales Desks, all punctuated by one of the line's signature bronze statues and fountains. It really cannot be overstated just how great the crew is on Serenity, with the whole staff just as effortlessly attentive and friendly as before, which is perhaps befitting given the ship's classy godmother of Julie Andrews, who reminds you to please subscribe to our channel. Said sculpture this time around is of a harpist and floating girl taking flight back by cathedral-style stained glass and reflective panels mirroring the colorful ceiling above. And perfect for the crystal ship overall, and theme of the atrium specifically is a neat translucent piano played by an expert pianist adept at performing some of my favorite film scores. Once per cruise, a white knight transforms the space into a performance and dance venue, complete with DJ and the ship's orchestra, as well as plenty of snacks to go around. A professional dancing couple gets things started. And speaking of movie soundtracks, a featured violinist even plays the main theme of the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise, written by none other than Hans Zimmer, backed by the excellent live band. Then an ace vocalist takes to the stage as guests themselves are invited to the dance floor. It makes for a well-attended party that loyalists continue to appreciate. Adjacent to the Crystal Plaza is the equally all-inclusive Crystal Cove Bar, where guests can order complimentary cocktails. It's another classic space that carries over Crystal's traditional luxury cruising, while also catering to a contemporary lifestyle. And timeless therein, of course, is the brand's unmatched superior service culture. But it's not only drinks and canapes that stand out on Serenity, its fine culinary program extends to the included waterside restaurant. It may be the ship's always available open seating main dining room, but there is certainly nothing standard about its stylish decor and fancy fare. At a lunch, I enjoyed a refreshing Cobb salad. And my dinners encompass great apps of carpaccio, of black Angus beef, and decadent white sturgeon caviar. Not to mention the venue's perfectly prepared pastas, an example of makeshift surf and turf, courtesy of fresh cold water lobster, and slow-cooked black Angus beef tenderloin, and a table-side deboned Dover sole a la Meunière. prior to a sweet, flourless chocolate milk cake send-off. And that's only one deck's worth of Serenity's luxury awaiting discerning travelers. Ascending from the atrium to deck six, first highlights the included Galaxy Lounge, a simple, single-story, yet capable theater that stages the ship's production shows, thankfully with uninterrupted sightlines. Legacy performances such as the My Life Billy Joel tribute show remain crowd favorites, especially given their marvelous cast of singers and dancers and I always appreciate live instrumentalists getting the spotlight they deserve. For a relatively small ship cruise line, Crystal really does still have the pick of the litter when it comes to talent. However, repeated shows like this, as well as Icons in Concert and Crystal on Broadway, are getting a bit long in the tooth and are due for a refresh to stay relevant to loyalists and those new to the brand as it plans to do with its food and upcoming partnership with Beef Bar, which was not yet available on our sailing, the line could certainly use some new entertainment soon. In fact, another area that is already being improved upon is the ship's current lack of a casino, an awesome ship model of the line's first ever Crystal Harmony, one that my parents and I previously sailed on during its inaugural voyage, takes up residence in Serenity's former gaming space. Now just the lounge, the secondary library and non-gambling card room is a large space with not much of a purpose, to be honest. But a casino is returning to the ship by the end of 2024. Still along for the ride are also the ship's Avenue of the Stars boutiques. As you can imagine, they are collectively one of the ship's only extra cost venues for those looking to buy high-end clothing, jewelry, and other accessories, because there is less in the way of logo items, surprisingly. As a storied brand, Crystal's shops could really use some more adorned ephemera among its high-ticket items of which there are otherwise plenty. Meanwhile, another classic carryover from the line's earliest days is the Bistro, but this time with a rejuvenated aesthetic, such as this neat new black and white wallpaper and handsome olive trim color. But guests will still find an array of free pastries and snacks throughout the day, as well as gourmet hot and iced coffees, teas and hot chocolates for all kinds of pick-me-ups. 
Besides needing to replace the long-faded posters outside, the Hollywood Theater has returned as the ship's welcome complimentary cinema. The sloped venue makes its seating ideal for film screenings and lectures alike. And it's nostalgically pleasing to see the podium still sporting the line's original serif font. Also mostly unchanged is the Crystal Images photo shop down the way. Here passengers can purchase professional images taken during the cruise. As still traditionally printed and displayed along the walls, as well as available digitally, as we bought to commemorate our time back on the line. Perhaps the only non-timeless venue that does show its age on board is the dated Pulse nightclub. The included space may be high energy in the evening, but its caged decor is in need of a refresh. Quite the opposite by comparison is the Connoisseur Club. While not a fan of its permitted smoking, I sure do love its vintage nautical aesthetic, high back chairs, and other wood and leather appointments. Thankfully, the same vibe continues in the smoke-free included Avenue Saloon Bar next door. Just look at this amazing ceiling of cartography at its finest, and corner nooks ideal for escaping too while enjoying piano lounge lullabies, paired with a potent potable. And still rocking its old school Anna typeface signage, I studied graphic design after all, is the included Stardust Club and its own smaller scale cabaret sets at the back of the ship, serviced again by a complimentary watering hole. The Rock and Pop Spot show is an example of a Serenity specific performance that could inspire grander future variants in the main show lounge, because again it's cast of vocalists, one of which I recognize from my previous trip on Symphony, and Dancers has the chops to bring anything new to life, and I'm confident the creatives behind these shows have something like that up their sleeves. Rounding out deck 6 at the outer stern is a set of golf driving nets, golf putting green, and table tennis, for practicing one's long and short games, or channeling one's inner Forrest Gump as it were, and immediately above on deck 7 is the ship's full wraparound promenade deck. Just like its observation lounge, this is yet another classic cruise ship venue that is so nice to see since they are less common these days. And as we now know, it's a scenic one that will be reprised on the line's next new ships as well. Also on this level are two of Serenity's specialty restaurants, but on Crystal, they are free to dine at once per cruise. The first is Umi Uma and Sushi Bar by Nobu Matsuhisa, still the only of its kind from the master chef at sea. Like other venues on board, this restaurant has been stylishly modernized to better frame the cuisine, which remains some of the best Japanese food anywhere in the world. Just be sure to come hungry as there is lots to try, starting with a Nobu special from the sushi menu. In addition to a sampler of favorite rolls, other appetizers extend to a beautifully composed seafood ceviche and scrumptious rock shrimp tempura. But still the creme de la creme here is the outstanding Nobu style black cod. Or for a second take on Surf and Turf, there are the excellent dishes of Nobu-style lobster with truffle yuzu and grilled Australian wagyu beef filet steak with choice of noodles and or rice on the side. And a creamy whiskey cappuccino makes for a great dessert. Down the way on this level are also the Century and Constellation Suites as support venues for use such as a bridal suite. The only extra charge dining venue on the ship is the vintage room for wine paired tasting menus and other special event meals in an exclusive boardroom like space with very inviting chairs my wife would point out. And speaking of fine wines, there are plenty that are included on Crystal in addition to a selection of premium choices as well as neatly displayed on this tablet back at the bistro. Continuing down the line on deck seven is the location of the ship's primary library a holdover from the golden age of cruising, and one which is very well stocked at that. Book aficionados will be most pleased, but the quantity might decrease soon when another venue is at least partially displaced here. Otherwise, the studio is a bonus included space for enrichment programming that is divided into a lecture hall, as well as a more traditionally mirrored and hardwood floored proper studio right past this door. Then on the opposite side of deck seven, as we follow a horseshoe route, is Computer University at Sea. I'm still very happy to see Crystal remain so Apple forward, at least on the lecture side. The flip side features other tablets and computer terminals for basic internet browsing, which is free thanks to included Wi-Fi access across the ship. And even farther down the line is the Bridge Lounge, which is slated to become the ship's new casino by the end of 2024, with bridge play being displaced into the aforementioned library. This space should work nicely as a casino. Probably the most significant change from Crystal 1.0 is the replacement of Prego, with the dramatically rethemed Osteria de Video for 2.0. While many miss the former iteration, I am quite the fan of its beef tartare, 
which is the best I've ever had, as well as refreshing caprese salad. And its tortello pastas are simply spectacular, from a pear and ricotta variety, to a braised beef, figs, and gorgonzola one. The only miss for me was the duck breast, which was very flavorful but rendered a bit chewy. But the strawberry balsamic and mascarpone dessert is a treat for sure. As we continue to head to higher decks, it's time to share the wonderful sapphire veranda suite I enjoyed on deck 9, and it was easily one of the best rooms I've ever occupied on a cruise ship. Right at the entrance, there is a convenient touch panel for activating Do Not Disturb and Clean Up indicator lights outside, not to mention the first of several handy hooks and the suite's walk-in closet. His and hers hanging clothes space is perfect, and shelves and drawers are plentiful, along with a safe. But not being able to fully pull out drawers when the closet door is swung open is a design flaw. Still, the vanity desk is an ideal nook for getting ready. Additional storage here goes a long way, and the pull-out refrigerator is conveniently accessible. At the counter, USB-A and USB-C charging ports, as well as US and European electrical outlets, are a welcome inclusion. Delineated living and dining spaces, in addition to even more storage, are excellent also, especially when receiving daily canapes from your butler, or room service of a shrimp Caesar salad, classic club sandwich, a custom top pizza, or even a cheese plate. Returning to the topic of tablets, there is also one available to use in each stateroom with the means to access several pertinent trip details, including dining menus and a web browser. But I personally found I could access all these things just as easily from my own iPhone, save for the occasional glitch. And even here, there are more charging ports and electrical outlets at the ready, as well as more storage before heading into the separate bedroom, which as you no doubt guessed is Teddy Bear approved courtesy of its super plush bed, and even more bedside storage and charging solutions that as it should be on every ship, is fully repeated at both nightstands. And from the cozy bed, there's even a second television to enjoy, with its own sizable selection of free on-demand programming. Naturally, the expansive veranda outside all of this is sized to match. And now's a good time, while we pan to view the cityscape of our beautiful home port of San Diego, to recommend booking your own Crystal Serenity cruise through our sponsor, Fairy Godmother Travel, who will magically take care of all your trip planning absolutely for free. To get your complimentary quote, just click the link right here, or follow the website, phone number, or email address below. Passing back through the bedroom is next the glorious Sapphire Veranda Suite bathroom, which upon first glance is already great due to its dual sink basins, but especially so given its toilet side wall phone and smartphone shelf for those of us who take care of business while taking care of business as it were. There's also another pair of hanging hooks here behind one of two entry doors, in addition to lots of towel and toiletry storage. But it's the shower, yes, the massive shower, that most shines in the bathroom, not only for its size, but also its water controls and fixtures crowned by a 16-inch rain head. This is nothing short of fit for a king or queen and provides a therapeutic downpour. And that's in addition to a handheld wand, plus a pair of side body sprays that will have you feeling like you're in a humanized car wash. If there's but one shortcoming in the bathroom, it is only that the mirror is not heated to keep it from fogging up when in said shower but that's easily forgiven based on the rest of the suite's exceptional outfitting. Then ascending to deck 12, we come to the Palm Court joining the promenade deck as one of the two traditional carryovers I most appreciate from cruising of yore. This still is one of the best examples of a forward-facing observation lounge, comfortably perched up high with unimpeded views in every direction. And it too comes serviced by the included sunset bar. Of course, the very front of the lounge with its swept back glass panels is the place to be for the best vistas while in port as seen in San Francisco, or at sea. And every afternoon is made special with a daily tea time, even more so when featuring chocolate. Suffice it to say the tea is nice, and so are the finger sandwiches. But the scones are the stars of the show as is said array of chocolate treats when available from the side tea room. Having myself been a child cruiser on Crystal decades ago, I commend the line for still being multi-generational friendly right down to the Fantasia Children's Playroom and Waves Teen Center. Really a singular contiguous space that can be divided as needed with video gaming consoles, a cool wall display of vinyl records and musical artist portraits, a fun oversized lamp, an arts and crafts table. And strolling through the teen side, the space becomes more social and urban chic in nature. On our particular cruise, as is usually the case on a sailing, we found most youthful cruisers gravitate towards the seahorse pool and whirlpools but it was never overrun as can be the case on larger mainstream ships. 
In fact, it was always quiet and serene once open for the day. And the teak-clad deck, seahorse sculpture, and padded loungers sure make for a premium pool deck experience. I, for one, would love to hop in one of these hot tubs right about now to melt all muscle tension away. It's on this level that the included Trident Grill and Scoop's Gelato Bar can also be found. And discover the latter we did pretty much every day, as its rotation of tempting flavors cycled through. My mom, who is the ice cream queen in our family, especially got a kick out of frequently returning here, even if it did mean eating dessert first, since life is uncertain and all of that. We did also enjoy our fair share of burgers as well. My favorite was a customized bacon blue and cheddar cheeseburger, but the salmon burger was a delicious healthier alternative. Behind that is additionally the ship's buffet, in the form of the marketplace restaurant. Remarkably, I neglected to take a photo of any of the great food I had here inside or out, but you can be certain it was on par with the rest on board, as served in duplicate on either side. Last but not least in the food department is Taste Kitchen and Bar, with its open display galley prepping for the day's included lunch and dinner service. Under a Magradome that once sat above a secondary pool is now the sun-drenched or shaded dining venue flanked by lovely living walls. Oh, and you can't beat these super inviting hanging chairs for a little respite in between meals, surely with a drink in hand from the attached bar. At lunch, I enjoyed Asian favorites like chicken and shrimp pot stickers, char siu bao, and stir-fry egg noodles. And then at dinner, the Lavender Sunset is the drink of choice to wash down tasty tapas-style sharing appetizers, such as a delightfully crunchy cured salmon, fresh ahi tuna pokey, and crispy fried prawn dumplings. Before entrees of Tremula baked salmon, gambas al ajillo, and California street tacos. The only thing I would note here is that pacing could be faster between the first and second half of the meal, but we had no complaints come a dessert of deconstructed bananas foster. Finishing up on deck 13 is where the extra cost Aurora Spa and ships included fitness center are positioned astern. This venue is another that received a redesign to modernize its spaces, like at its beauty salon just off the entrance. It was always in a scenic location, but the salon itself has now been dressed better to emphasize the view. And as you would expect, there are still women's and men's locker rooms, each with their own steam room and dry sauna, which again enjoys the same great views as the salon. And rounding out the locker rooms, of course, are a series of showers to use before heading to the relaxation room that overlooks the very back of the ship, making for a lovely quiet place to wait for massages and other body treatments in several individual rooms. And the fitness center on the other side is very well outfitted with a motion studio section, as well as lots of other equipment to use, that is to work off the pounds gained from the ship's great dining. Then outside is the Wimbledon court, catering to full-size paddle tennis, as well as newly popular pickleball. As seen below Coit Tower and the San Francisco skyline on a sunny day is the rest of the sun deck, leading to the forward observation deck. Once again past the pool and whirlpools, we can see just how expansive this level is for taking in the ship's surroundings, and the skylights that shine light into the lovely palm court below. Now let's recap with our final pros and cons. What we disliked as pains in the aft are the aging production shows that are in need of a refresh, some ship spaces and food pacing that could still use a bit of polish, and just a couple of sweet design flaws. But what we most liked and can take a bow are the otherwise perfect suite accommodations, ship stellar dining and service culture, and looking forward to further improvements, like a returning casino and introduction of beef bar still to come. Thanks so much for watching. If you would, as it really does help support us, please like this video with a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel while hitting that bell icon to be notified of new videos, watch our other ones, and visit popularcruising.com.